Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to greet Tucker Carlson and his fantastic team. I just want to say that Joe Biden has dementia and is not in charge. Doesn't seem like he's capable of running again. Surely, time has come to change this. Who does run? We are going to build a massive state-of-the-art complex to imprison any Democrat that might win the next election. The old Soviet process. We plan to allocate all the necessary funding for its construction. What, how do you think that your opponents will respond? I can assure you that our grand-scale plans will be delivered. What's up, guys? Your boy, Benny. You ever seen Terminator 2 when the nuclear explosion goes off and Sarah Connor is sitting there at the chain link fence <laughs> exploding into salt and ash? Ah! That is precisely the meltdown that we are about to witness on the internet when Tucker Carlson gets his Vladimir Putin interview. Oh, yes, baby! Apparently. It's happening. This is the breaking news. Now, we've brought you the news that Tucker Carlson is in Russia. Here's what we absolutely know. And we told you we'd do our reporting and we'd run ourselves up our little chains of sources and people that we know in the know in the Tucker orbit. And we have some information to give you. First off, publicly available information. Tucker Carlson is, of course, in Moscow. Tucker is staying in Moscow. Uh, he's gone to uh, very, very nice ballets in Moscow, went to the Bolshe Theater, and is staying at one of the most premier locations in the center of Moscow, and that Tucker Carlson has left, as you can see here on your screen, for the Kremlin. So Tucker Carlson going uh, through the gated doors at the Kremlin, heading from his hotel uh, to the uh, center of power and government uh, inside of the Russian Federation. So we know that now. We also know that Tucker Carlson just moments ago left the Kremlin after approximately one hour. Vladimir Putin was not with him based on the motorcade uh, and that he has gone back to his hotel. Putin reportedly remained at the Kremlin palace. The uh, source here is Sputnik, which is the uh, news, large news network there in Russia. And so... Tucker is seen inside of the Kremlin and then leaving the Kremlin after a period of time, maybe enough time to do an interview. Maybe he's just going to say hello. I don't know. Can't be sure. Now, we have asked, we'll just lay it all out there. We have asked sources quite close to Tucker, people that worked with him before and still concurrently work with him. Nobody who's actually currently on this trip. I want to be very upfront. Um... And they say, yes, the Putin interview is happening. I mean, of course, this stands to reason. Tucker Carlson has tried to interview Vladimir Putin a number of times before, and our own spy agencies spied on him, hacked his texts and emails, uh, and prevented that from happening. So, ladies and gentlemen, an interesting time indeed to be alive. Now, uh, Tucker Carlson was asked in his hotel in Moscow if he's going to interview Vladimir Putin. He was asked by a journalist, independent journalist in Russia, and Tucker says, we'll see, which I think in Tucker language is yes, absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, we may well see the greatest single apoplectic salty meltdown from libs that you have ever seen on the internet and probably the most viewed video certainly the most viewed interview in human history. There's never been a billion view interview and Tucker will get it with Putin. That is a guaranteed fact. He had 500 million people watch his interview uh, with Javier Millet, the president of Argentina. And so it stands to reason that the interview with Putin simply based on the Streisand effect, right? Don't watch it, don't watch it, don't watch it. Everyone will go watch it, right? They'll, they'll create, they'll make this the biggest interview of all time. So is Tucker Carlson uh, a traitor to his nation? That's what some people say. Many, many major news outlets say that. Uh, I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, a NBC News report from inside of the same building that Tucker Carlson from just a few years ago, a few short years ago. Here's NBC News with all their glossy cameras and all the equipment they can possibly throw at it, making Putin 
Look sharp! Look at this! I mean, you and wow. I, you and I personally have a much closer relationship than I had with Mr. Flynn. You and I met yesterday oh, interesting. evening. You and I have been Here's working a Fox together News all day today, and now we're meeting again. When I Former Fox News personality, Megyn Kelly, who then moved over to NBC News, sitting there with Putin. This interview was in the year 2018. Not too long ago. You were definitely alive during those years. Nobody had any problems with this. Vladimir Putin said his piece, Megyn Kelly said her piece, and they broadcast it on NBC. Many NBC reporters losing their shit. That Tucker Carlson is in Russia right now. Yet they did the same thing just like a, a, a second ago. I don't remember our government spying on Megyn Kelly for doing this. I came to the event Why are they treating Russia today and sat down at the Tucker table? Tucker differently. Next to me, there was a gentleman sitting on one side. I made my speech, then we talked about some other stuff, and I got up and left. And then afterwards, I was told, you know, there was an American gentleman, he was involved in some things. He used to be in the security services. That's it. So this is, of course, Putin talking about the hyped up, trumped up Russia collusion hoax. You can do it and show it again and again and again. Here's Showtime, an American company making a whole documentary about Vladimir Putin. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's Vladimir Putin walking down a hallway. Here he is getting a lav. Here's some B-roll of Vladimir Putin walking through big golden doors. And here he is talking with Oliver Stone, the interviewer. This was created by Showtime. Oh wow, they're peacefully walking around a palace. Here's Vladimir Putin being interviewed by another American company called the Associated Press. Boy, oh boy. You can go find these interviews, you know. This is shocking. Look at this dork. Who's this giant push broom mustache guy? I don't know, but he's interviewing Putin and he works for an American outlet. Here's Bloomberg doing the same thing. And again, and again, and again. Oh, wow. The Bloomberg here. Oh, well, you can see the watermark there. Here's the Bloomberg reporter sitting down and interviewing Putin. All of this ha was happening within the last five years, yet they're losing their effing minds because they know that Tucker Carlson is going to ask questions that the super state in America does not want him to ask. He's going to ask questions to get to the reality of America's funding and the war in Ukraine and maybe multiple other wars and the actual state of geopolitics. Now, that, of course, is his right to do. Tucker Carlson, of course, has a constitutional right to do that. That is what the First Amendment was per was created for. This is what actual journalism is in order to find out information that may or may not uh, be very inconvenient to powerful people. And it's very inconvenient to our powerful for people to learn the truth about Russia, learn the truth about the war in Ukraine. And quite frankly, I'm not sure even I know. So it'd be really nice for Tucker Carlson, who has every right to interview a world leader, to go do that. Of course, Tucker Carlson, the person for it. Tucker Carlson was spied upon by our own federal government when he tried to do this the first time. Now he's being called a traitor to America. Here, sharing the images of Tucker Carlson standing in his the hotel lobby. Perhaps we need a total and complete shutdown of Tucker Carlson re-entering the United States until this country's representatives can figure out what's going on. Oh, okay, so here's Bill Crystal, little fat goblin, Bill Crystal, calling for Tucker Carlson to... Uh, not be allowed back into the country. He has a really great list. NBC News interviews Putin. Associated Press interviews Putin. Op-ed in the New York Times. Putin wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. 60 Minutes interviews Putin in 2015. Bloomberg, 2016. Other, uh, all these other documentaries. Amazing. Yet, neocon globalist uh, chodes like Bill Crystal sitting there talking about, hmm, we shouldn't let Tucker Carlson back into the country, but we should definitely actually let in tens of millions of immigrants, criminal migrants, criminal aliens who wish to replace the white working class. Just a grotesque clip. Russian media publishes pictures of Tucker Carlson in Moscow, claims he's set for sit down interview with Putin. Did that happen over the, this is Tucker Carlson's uh, chief executive producer here, his name's Justin Wells, that's who this man is. Uh, did that happen in that one hour at the Kremlin? I mean, I doubt it. That's a pretty short amount of time for an interview.
Tucker Carlson is definitely seeing the best of Moscow, though. Um, I was speaking with somebody that I know from Russia, and this is apparently this this theater is apparent the 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 Bolshoi Theater is apparently the, the best in all of Moscow. Again, here's Barbara Walters interviewing Vladimir Putin. Interesting. Same people are now calling Tucker Carlson a traitor. Did the exact same thing. That's right. Here's the Barbara Walters interview. Oh my! Look, she shakes his hand. Oh my God! Let's investigate her for three years for Russia collusion. Here's Barbara Walters with a mass murderer, Fidel Castro. Here's 60 Minutes with the Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran. Here's a Saddam report from Dan Rather. <laughs> Here you go. CNN interviewed Osama bin Laden. There you go. There's a real photo. A CNN interview with Osama bin Laden. Sean Penn interviewed El Chapo. We were at, again, mass murderers, murderers of Americans. Tucker interviewing Putin makes him a traitor. Yeah, unbelievable. Adam Kinzinger, he's a traitor. Oh, okay. Adam Kinzinger. Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening here is the destruction of a narrative. What's happening here is the screaming from our intelligence agencies and for our, our forever war flank in this country that suddenly runs everything all of a sudden because their pockets, uh, which have been enriched by forever war, uh, may actually get the funding cut off if people start learning that these forever wars are created to defraud the taxpayers and to move money from the coffers of Americans into the pockets of corrupt individuals in this country and around the world. And this is how it's done. Tucker Carlson obviously talking about the number of news anchors who are mouthpieces for the Pentagon and the CIA, and they knowingly tell lies on the behalf. It's, of course, called Operation Mockingbird, where they buy off or manipulate members of the press into effectively becoming stooges for the intel agencies. It's happened from the beginning of our intelligence agencies, uh, the CIA in 1947, uh, and it continues through to today. Now, these people were so upset at Tucker Carlson for potentially uh, upsetting the narrative about Vladimir Putin uh, that they spied on Tucker. That happened. Tucker Carlson was banned then from interviewing Putin by his old bosses at Fox News. He talks about it in an episode. Now Tucker Carlson doesn't have slave shackles around his neck and can go interview whoever the hell he wants. It's going to be wild, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what they tried to do to him the first time. We hope they don't succeed again. The Biden administration's largest intelligence gathering agency, the NSA, had been reading my private emails. Even saying that out loud is weird. It's one of those segments we never thought we would do ever. But the country has changed that much that fast. And honestly, the whole thing was kind of shocking. The government was spying on us? Come on. It seemed crazy. But it's true. And no one in Washington appeared to be shocked in the slightest. In fact, the usual shills right after our segment had a ready explanation for it. Either it never happened at all, they said, just a cable news show lying for ratings, or there must have been a good reason it happened. And they began furiously making excuses for why the NSA did it. A powerful, heavily politicized spy agency surveilling journalists who've been critical of the regime? No problem. It's perfectly normal. Just don't call it spying. But it's not normal at all. It is third world. And as we told you repeatedly, it did happen. Now that has been confirmed. Yesterday, we learned that sources in the so-called intelligence community told at least one reporter in Washington what was in those emails, my emails. There was nothing scandalous in there, thank God. We're happy to report that. Late this spring, I contacted a couple of people I thought could help get us an interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. I told nobody I was doing this other than my executive producer, Justin Wells. I wasn't embarrassed about trying to interview Putin. He's obviously newsworthy. I'm an American citizen. I can interview anyone I want, and I plan to. But still, in this case, I decided to keep it quiet. I figured that any kind of publicity would rattle the Russians and make the interview less likely to happen. But the Biden administration found out anyway by reading my emails. I learned from a whistleblower that the NSA planned to leak the contents of those emails to media outlets. Why would they do that? Well, the point, of course, was to paint me as a disloyal American, a Russian operative, been called that before, a stooge of the Kremlin, a traitor doing the bidding of a foreign adversary. And of course, I'm the 
hardly the only person who's been accused of those things in the last several years. We've seen this movie several times now. At the same moment the communist Chinese government increases its already stunning level of control over this country, our leaders prattle on about the threat of Vladimir Putin. He's an evildoer, they tell us, a totalitarian dictator. Vladimir Putin does things that no American leader would even consider. He runs domestic disinformation campaigns. He lies to the public. He punishes people for opposing him or for believing the wrong things. He even uses intelligence agencies to spy on his own citizens, beyond the pale stuff. So no decent American would interview Vladimir Putin, at least no reporter from Fox News. That was the point they wanted to make. That's why they planned to leak the contents of my emails to news organizations. And yesterday, as noted, we learned they actually did it. Even now, some in the media are claiming that we deserve this. Emailing with people who know Putin, are you? Of course the NSA is watching you. That's what you get. But that's hardly the point. By law, the NSA is required to keep secret the identities of American citizens who've been caught up in its vast domestic spying operations. So by law, I should have been identified internally merely as a U.S. journalist or American journalist. That's the law. But that's not how I was identified. I was identified by name. I was unmasked. People in the building learned who I was. And then my name and the contents of my emails left that building at the NSA and wound up with a news organization in Washington. That is illegal. In fact, it is precisely what this law was designed to prevent in the first place. We cannot have intelligence agencies used as instruments of political control. Both parties used to agree on that. Democrats were especially adamant on the point, but not anymore. So that's exactly what is happening here. We need to find out how this happened. Who did it? Who allowed it? Paul Nakasone would know the answer. Paul Nakasone is the highly political director of the NSA. Paul Nakasone would have been required personally to approve my unmasking. That's how it works. Paul Nakasone should explain who asked for that unmasking, and he should do it immediately. Averill Haynes would also likely know the answer. Haynes is the even more political director of, the, of national intelligence. She oversees all of it. She may have approved the unmasking as well. She would certainly know who asked for it and who approved it. That's her job to know. She should release that information immediately, tonight. And if Averill Haynes does not release that information, she should be forced to release that information. We don't have a lot of power as a TV show, but we're going to keep pushing for that because it matters not just to us, but to the entire country. You can't have a democracy in a place where unaccountable spy agencies keep people in line by leaking the contents of their emails, discrediting them with their own emails, which they thought were private. You can't, it doesn't work if you allow that. And we suspect congressional Republicans will also demand an answer. Many have finally awakened to the fact that the intelligence agencies, which they have blindly supported for so long, are not in fact their friends. They're not the friends of anyone in this country. They're dangerous. That's obvious.